Hello, everybody. It's really nice to see you all here. Um, I am going to have to read from notes as opposed to my colleagues who have spoken more extemporaneously because um, it's that time of year in festival preparation where I just don't have the bandwidth to keep two thoughts together. So if you'll forgive me for continuing to put my head down, um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Let me do this. How's that? Okay. So, um, lots of people, I have been here all today to tell you how to maximize your festival experience in September, and I'm going to do some of that, but I'm also going to make your eyes just completely roll back in your head by asking you to think about what comes after TIFF. I know that by finishing your film and getting invited to a large festival, you may think that momentarily your work is done, but no. A lot of what I'm going to talk about is perhaps more germane to short filmmakers, but I think it's good advice for everybody. Sorry, can't see my notes. How's that? Okay. Um, I can't repeat enough what you have already heard several times this morning. Make a plan. It can be flexible and opportunistic, but you need to know what it is that you want to get out of your festival experience. And beyond that, to go forward with a festival participation strategy, you also have to be smart about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the changing global cinematic environment where sales, distributions, and festivals themselves are changing hourly, your best weapon is information to be as for informed as possible about the world of possibilities in front of you and how to best pursue them. And again, as everybody's mentioned, we here at TIFF are here to help you get access to that information. So just for a minute, I wanted to go back to basics and have you think about the reasons that festivals exist. There's four in my mind, and in no order of importance, they are to present your work to audiences and to learn from that presentation, two, to sell your film, three, to get press for your film, four, to win prizes. Now, if you aim to accomplish two out of these four things, I think that's excellent, laudable, and manageable. Two things I want you to think about, and then we're going to speak about them separately, and then I thought um, I'll just talk about it, and then afterwards we can maybe have some question and answer. So the first thing is, what is my post-TIFF festival strategy? Has anybody here thought about submitting to other festivals? Have you done it already? One, two, oh, quite a lot of you. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, moving forward then. Whether you have a sales agent or not, and whether or not your film is sold, you should think about participating in other festivals, but you do need to do it strategically. If you have a sales agent, you have to implement that strategy with them. They are your partner in all of this. If you currently have a distributor, then any festival participation within the territory that they own obviously has to be done in consultation with them. But if you only have distribution in North America or none at all, <clears throat> excuse me, then the rest of the world is your oyster. So before you embark on submitting to other festivals, you need to do a little bit of homework. You have to ask yourself, who is the audience for my film and where are they? And at which events can I find those people? Which events are the gateway to that audience? Because it's at that event that you're going to find the right press, the sales agent or the buyer for your film. Uh, spend a few hours in the next few weeks going through the trade papers and festival databases and search film categories and genres of the festival calendar. So you need to know what kind of film that you have. And there's a couple of great film festival databases that are online. The BFI has a really good one. Given their budget cuts, I don't know how much it's still operating, but I suggest that one as a first go-to. And then there's a couple of other ones. And then you can search those festival databases either by chronology, i.e. the calendar, or you can do it through genres of films or um, by territories. There's a bunch of different ways to search them. Um, and two of the things I think you should use as your key search agents are what kind of film you have, i.e. what genre it falls into, and second of all, the actual chronological calendar calendar because you want to use your premiere here at TIFF, TIFF as, a, as a leverage, as a launch pad into the next couple of stages of what you're going to do. When you go through those databases, um, you should choose four events that would be targets for you and prioritize them, whether it's by calendar or by genre. And remember always that your premier, premier status is one of the best leverages that you have. So while you're having your world premiere here, you still have an international premiere, a North American premiere, European, Asian, any number of those. And festivals are very competitive for premiere status on films. So that's a good leverage that you have. Um, P 
people often say, well, you know, the thing about other festivals, there's so much paperwork and it costs a lot of money. Well, the thing is, is that you've already done the paperwork once, right? So you just have to really mutate that over into the other submission forms. Second of all, one way to save money on submission fees is to invite the programmers from other festivals to your screenings here. In addition to all of the buyers that I know people have talked about and the sales agents that are attending here, we have hundreds of programmers from events all around the world coming here to essentially shop for their own festivals. They um, either want us to do some of the curatorial work in advance, or they don't have the budgets themselves for their events to go to every other important film festival in the world. And because of the breadth and the depth, and I like to think the curatorial standard that we set, many, many, many of them come here and look for films that they want to present in their own events. So take advantage of that fact. Also, um, so approach them here. Based on my own experience, if someone comes to me and says, we'd really like you to see our film, we think it's a really good match for your event, um, and they go and they get me a ticket or they get me all the information, I do absolutely everything I can to go and attend because it means that they've spent some time thinking about it, uh, they've drawn a bead on our event, and I want to also honor all of that work. So it's a good thing to do. Um, the best way to do that is this Friday, our sales and industry office is going to be publishing the delegates list. This is the big honking document that contains the names and contact information and job titles of all of the people who have registered here as delegates. It's a list that's very, very long. <clears throat> Excuse me. As accredited guests of the festival, and producers, I think, have a film rep pass, you have access to that directory online. Um, Tonight or tomorrow, what I suggest you do is to go and do some research and figure out some of the festivals that you would like to be a part of in the next year. And on Friday, when that registrants list becomes available, go into that list and search for the events that you have prioritized, that you've targeted, and look who is going to be attending here from that event. Um, after that, what I suggest you do is you send them a lovely email, not too long, asking them to come and see your film because you think that um, it would be a good match for their event. Um, this premiere status is available, whatever it is from your film. Um, give them the screening times, your contact information, and if you have a web page or a Facebook uh, page for your film, give them the link to that. So the key thing is to be obviously polite, be early be brief and be succinct. Give them a couple of days to respond, and if they don't, then it's absolutely appropriate to send a gentle follow-up email. Another thing is, um, for those of you who are producers, your film rep pass gives you access to the PNI screenings. And if you want to go early to your PNI screening and go to the lineup for the people uh, who are waiting to see your film, you can work your way up and down the line, introducing yourself, extending a business card, and asking for one in return. It can be really educational for you to find out who has self-selected your film to see. And then obviously you can do follow-up with them afterwards, Give them a while. Give them like three, four, five days after the screening or even after the festival. Um, you know, people here are so crazy and frenetic um, that they may not respond to emails right away. Um, a lot of this is just as germane to short filmmakers uh, because sales are tough, but festival participation, as I said, can win you prizes, and that makes it a lot easier, frankly, to get money to make your next film. Festival participation also keeps your film on everyone's radar. Buyers can't see everything, but they or somebody in their office is tracking titles all day long, 365 days a year. So if they see your title pop up um, again and again or at a smaller event than this one, there's a a good chance that they're going to make an effort to catch it. Um, do your homework, though, and make sure that you know who you want to see your film. The other key thing to remember is that you have to make contact with people early. If you wait until the first, the few days before the festival or during the festival, you're going to be out of luck. It is way too frenetic. People's schedules are completely booked, and you run the risk if you're running around hectoring people during the free, first few days of the festival. They're going to essentially think you're an unprofessional annoyance, and nobody wants that. So it's the very nature of a plan that it's something that you create in advance 
and then you execute. So early, early, early. The next five days are going to be really critical in executing whatever plan you've put together for yourself. Another document that I recommend that you take a look at is the rights list, which is also produced by the Sales and Industry Office. It gives you a lot of information about how films are sold, but it also gives you a really good idea of who is selling films and what kind of films that they are selling. Sales agents are just like programmers. They have particular taste, and it always helps to approach people who might be more open to considering the type of film that you have. Um, I need to say that for the first time in 10 years this year, I have been approached by numerous sales agents who are looking for new product to sell. This has rarely ever happened before. I think a lot of this has to do with the changing landscape of um, the whole sales and distribution thing around the globe. But that does mean that if your rights, um, the rights that you have to your film are appropriately represented in the rights list, you may yourself be on the receiving end of some inquiries. Um, if you're looking for a sales agent and you think you've isolated a couple of possibilities by looking at the rights list and, of course, exploring and doing a bit of research online about what kind of company this is and what kind of films that they sell, take a minute and contact contact Justin Cutler in the sales and industry office. I've pre-checked with him. He's absolutely open to any inquiries that you want to have. Um, and ask him if he thinks that the people that you've selected might be good choices for your film. He knows everybody. He knows what they're doing. And he's a font of information and you should use him. Um, then, as before, approach those people early. They're going to be super, super busy when they're here. And um, if you want them to consider your film, to consider representing it, you absolutely need to get to them in advance. Um, do the same as you would with the other people. Briefly, succinctly, give them full information. It's the beginning of a conversation. And I'm sure that they've mentioned previously here before, um, if you are unrepresented here, but you do get approached about um, a purchase by a buyer, there is the broker's corner um, where we have a sales consultant who's more than happy to walk you through the process and see whether this is the right thing for you to do. The second thing I want to talk about um, is maybe also a bit insane, but I want you to think about your next film. Uh, maybe a lot of you already are. However, it's during the 10 days at TIFF that there are remarkable opportunities to network on an international level. International co-production, both on an, on an artistic and financial level, it's not the wave of the future. It is the present right now. Your next collaborator, your producing partner, your funder, your writer, whoever it is, may literally be around the next corner. Again, take some time in advance of the festival when the program is announced. Pick some films to see, particularly towards the end of the festival when it gets a little bit more relaxed. Fill yourself up again with inspiration and some imagination. Pursue some things that you would never normally have the chance to do. If someone's here that you want to meet, ask us, and we will try to arrange it. I don't mean Nicole Kidman, obviously, or anything like that, um, but maybe we can arrange a, a coffee or an invitation to that filmmaker's cocktail from their hosting country or something like that. It's rare that some of us here um, don't know somebody that can get you towards somebody. We're here to help you. We're here to support you and to help you make the absolute most of this opportunity. And that's my little bit. <laughs>